What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound of Tech once again, and today we have yet another talking head video. We do a poll on Twitter to determine the topic for the talking head video, so be sure you follow over at Son of a Tech to get that information. If you want to pick up a Ridge wallet and you've been thinking about it for decreasing that clutter in your pocket, go ahead and use that Amazon link down in the description below to give me a little kickback. That'd be awesome. Don't forget too, you get $25 for using my referral code on crypto.com. Also linked in the description. And of course, Hive OS, my favorite mining operating system that is easy to use straight out of the box. And that is why we use it. We've been asked that question a few times. So there you go. Now, we were gonna talk about Ethereum moving to proof of stake, but some recent changes that have been pushed forward as far as in the timeline have kind of shifted that topic to talking about EIP 1559. Most of you have already probably heard about it and I'm going to try to explain it in the most layman terms possible with of course my lack of knowledge on as much of the blockchain there as I have, I do understand some of the basic math here and hopefully what I've been able to gather from what's going on, I can relate to you in the easiest terms possible. Now to start it off, EIP, what is that? That is an Ethereum improvement proposal. This one in particular was proposed, has been in the works and is now getting ready to be released. The number is just noting, of course, the proposal number. So nothing too big there. There are a couple different types of EIPs. One is going to require a full network upgrade and that is a core EIP. Others don't require full network upgrades. Examples of those that don't would be like the token system ERC20, where people are allowed to go ahead and start utilizing it, but it didn't require a big change across the entire network. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about how this is a little different than both of those. It is going to be a core EIP. However, it will support legacy transactions. This will be important when we start talking about the math later on. And these are going to be simple variables. A plus B equals C and then A equals C, right? That sort of thing. It shouldn't be too hard to understand. It's pretty straightforward. So what is EIP trying to do? The first thing is trying to do is make transaction fees more predictable. How they're proposing to do this is by specifying a minimum fee. This is going to be the first variable, which is going to be called the base fee. And a transaction needs to be included in a block directly in the header. Okay. So you have that base fee. This is how they're going to try to resolve it. The next problem that they want to resolve or the next proposal for improvement is going to be reducing the inclusion delays for transactions. They're proposing that they will be doing this by doubling the block size and keeping it half empty most of the time. This in theory will basically decrease the transaction times. We can talk about that in a later video and how all this math works out as far as that goes. If you're interested, let me know in the comment section below. Now, finally, they're going to create a positive feedback loop between the network usage and ETH supply. Ooh, this is the big one, guys. For miners, this is a big deal. It's gonna be a big deal for a lot of people. When they're talking about supply, the supply on Ethereum is not capped. They are proposing to do this by increasing and lowering the base fee as demand for the block space increases and decreases. So that base fee is going to fluctuate depending on the demand on the network. So for example, on Monday when it dipped, right? And everybody was, the, the, the network was very congested. And that means basically that base fee is going to go higher and higher and higher when people are trying to can do more on the network. So keep that in mind. It's kind of an important thing because what are they going to do with that base fee? So to solve that problem, they say they are going to burn the base fee. What is burning? Burning means that they are going to take that base fee and remove it from the total supply of Ethereum. So if that base fee is two Ethereum, they're going to remove that two Ethereum, thereby decreasing the total supply of Ethereum. 
The thought behind this is that it will increase the price of Ethereum, which would maybe work if Ethereum wasn't a capped coin as Bitsby Trippin so aptly put it on his video earlier today covering this. So we have the base fee. There are going to be two more variables to this fee system or this new system. We're going to have the fee cap. So at all times there will be a cap on fees. At no time can you go above that fee. And what that's going to do is in theory make the transaction costs more predictable. Okay. Now along with that is the tip. Now this is where mining comes in. The tip is going to go to the miners. And so if you want your transaction on the network to go through faster, you will increase your tip to put yourself to the front of the line and get your transaction done quicker than somebody else not tipping the miners as much. However, the tip plus the base fee can never exceed the fee cap. The fee cap has not been announced yet from anywhere I can find. So unfortunately we don't know the differences between how much the base fee will fluctuate, how much potential you have for mining, because we also don't understand what the fee cap will be. But as we work through this, we might get a get better idea. So fee cap equals base fee plus tip. We talked about them being able to allow legacy transactions. A legacy transaction is all determined by gas fee. And you can basically put a bid on the network to get your transaction done faster by increasing how much you want to pay for that gas fee. And that's what we've shown in MetaMask in some very basic terms previously. So that's kind of where that is. Now, in this case, they're going to support that by making essentially the fee cap equal the gas price. This gets really, really important when we start talking about what happens to the leftovers. Okay. So we were talking about them uh, increasing and decreasing the base fee based on network usage. So let's say the network usage is really high and you go ahead and submit a transaction. But then by the time it gets to that, your, the network usage is low and the base fee decreases. Well, in that case, essentially whatever is left over. So you've paid in already to make that transaction, but now the base fee is decreased, right? So when that base fee decreases, that money is refunded to the user that put in the request for the transaction. It does not go to the miner. The base fee still gets burnt and the tip still goes to the miner. In the case of legacy applications or legacy transactions, the, the gas price will remain the same. However, as opposed to, let's say they overpaid, right? And the network usage was high and then dipped. In that same scenario, they are gonna burn the rest of that fee. That's gonna encourage, of course, all of the legacy transactions to upgrade to the new one because the users are gonna get upset that basically they're burning extra money even though the network usage was low when their transaction finally went through. So here's the reasons they are fee burning. And this comes directly from their documentation. I'm not speaking out of terms or, or saying anything that they didn't say. And it's, it's very eye opening. First, uh, they're doing it because miners could collude to keep the base fee high. Miners now just get a tip and the block reward. The block reward is the two Ethereum that you're rewarded at all times for solving a block. And then the tip now replaces that fee. So because they don't want miners to basically manipulate the network to always uh, have high, a high base fee and, and gather that base fee from the, for themselves, they're basically saying, well, we're just going to burn it instead. Kind of have to do that, I guess, because Essentially think of it this way, right? If miners started manipulating it and the network usage is high or high, right? And then it dips, then you would just decrease the hash rate to keep that, that base fee high. That's essentially what they're trying to prevent people from manipulating by doing the fee burning. Now, they also say 
these are a bulk of the minor reward. That's in their documentation here. So because of that, they added fee burning. All right, cool, dude. Just saying. All right, cool, dude. And then finally, the only positive, which I think is only in here to make it sound positive, is the burning of the base fee creates a positive feedback loop between the network and ETH supply, basically increasing price by reducing supply. Not really, um, because like we talked about before, Ethereum is not a capped coin. But, you know, they, they address that. Don't worry. Let's talk about some misconceptions. The first misconception that they address is that they say that gas prices will not be lower. As opposed to the belief that this is supposed to solve gas prices being so high. No. This just makes them more predictable. Eek. Okay. So, we're just making... That's fine. We get it. More predictable. Probably easier for investors. All right? So... The next one is that it will make ETH deflationary. What do they mean by deflationary? Well, they're talking about more ETH going out of the network than coming in and being created to the network. So right now, whenever you complete a block as a miner, you create two Ethereum. So those are new Ethereum being added to the total supply of ETH. Well, if you're burning off the fees and that base fee keeps going higher, as the demand on the network goes higher, if that base fee goes beyond the two ETH on the block reward, you start removing ETH from the network, which can cause a lot of issues because whose ETH is it removing, right? Well, they say that this is only true if the transactions, like I explained just now, from the base fee are consistently, that's the keyword that kind of threw me off there, consistently much larger than block rewards. So the tip doesn't con uh, contribute to supply reduction, which we understand that the tip's coming from the person submitting the transaction. That's different, right? But the, the concerning part is they say consistently, meaning that it is possible that it does deflate in some circumstances based on their current, uh, their current formulas for this, which by the way, will be in the description and you can check out all of this right here in the resources that I have pulled up. I'll link this down for you guys to go through and I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions on this. So we, I've gone through it all, I've read all of these and then finally we do need to talk about security. So here's the deal, there are two big issues here one that they point out and one that really is talked about of course in security here is the number one topic but in their official documentation and release of this back in december they talked about essentially because they're doubling that the, that it also that it also doubles the potential for a dos attack which is a denial of service attack so they are increasing the possibility of a denial of service attack slowing down the network significantly, right? Not just by like a few percentages, but by a lot. Now, apparently they're working on this. I haven't seen a resolution. If you guys have heard a resolu of a resolution, let me know in the comment section below. Next, we have to worry about a 51% attack to drive the base fee to zero, thereby increasing tip potential. So if you have a fee cap and you have a, uh, a base fee going up and down, and this isn't even more than a 51% attack. This is just increasing the hash rate with the demand. So this is a problem that I still don't think that they've solved, okay? Even though that they say they solved it, they say you don't have to worry about 51% attack. It's not really a 51% attack. It's like almost like a 100% attack. Like if you control all of the hash rate or you get miners to collude together to control all of the hash rate, you could potentially decrease the hash rate when the network usage is low, right? And then increase it when it's high to manipulate that base fee. That's that's the theory, right? And you use the term 51% attack, but it's really just, and you probably would have to have a significant amount of hash power. There are miners that have that if they got together and worked together. I don't see why you couldn't technically manipulate it in that fashion. And if they can 
basically keep that base fee to zero at all times, then they increase the potential for the tip. Because of the fee cap, miners are gonna benefit when the base fee is at its lowest because they will get most of the tip, right? Most of those transaction fees. So that is a security concern that I see that I, I also haven't really seen an argument to come against, I guess, or, or be resolved. I understand that like there's a ton of hash power on Ethereum, probably not as big of a deal. If this was a smaller coin, it would be a much larger deal. So keep those in mind. Then finally, I wanted to talk about this too. In an article, uh, when was this written? This was written on January 11th. So about four days ago, for you miners out there, uh, ETH, ETH is going to go proof of stake on ETH, ETH1 now. Uh, previously, we were expecting it to go proof of stake when it hit ETH2. Now, part of their plan for their roadmap is that they will be moving ETH1 to proof of stake before moving to ETH2.0. So the idea is that the merge is the point at which we move ETH1 off proof of work and onto proof of stake. Another point of that is that this is a three-pronged attack planned over 2021. So it's safe to assume that they are trying to move ETH1 to proof of stake sometime this year. However, the good news is when asked about EIP 1559, if we could expect it within the next three months or it'll take longer, Tim said almost certainly longer. So we know that EIP 1559 is coming before the move to proof of stake for ETH. And we know that it won't be in within the next three months. So you're good for Q1. What does this mean for miners? Well, I mean, it's not gonna be as profitable at the end of the day it doesn't look like eip is is 1559 is in favor of miners at all in fact it looks like they're subsidizing miners and uh, i but i i don't see that as being uh, unexpected because they are ov obviously trying to move to proof of stake so i think everybody could see this coming from day one there's still going to be profitable coins to mine you know a rising tide raises all ships as, as bits has been known to say and everybody in the crypto space all those alt altcoins are coming up raven profitability is up even though the coin's not up which is surprising right uh grin profitability is up you're gonna have other coins to mine is it gonna be as profitable as ethereum is right now no but you're also gonna be able to buy graphics cards again for a decent price so buy smart get in when the graphics cards are cheap start mining something that maybe looks promising we have the raven having coming up in 2022 wink wink okay so when you can get some good raven mining cards even though it is very power hungry on kapow look into that don't buy any graphics cards right now to mine ethereum thinking you're gonna be able to mine it for two years and double your money that's not gonna happen okay it's very clear that they're they they uh they want to move to proof of stake they want to start encouraging more people to have to to conduct more transactions on the network and as part of that their focus is definitely going to be that over the miners and this is where we're at as miners this is where we're at this is what they think of us okay they don't care about you they care about ethereum and that's a fair point okay i get it do I, do I support it? I, I'm not sure. Like I said, I, there's some risks here that, that don't make sense to me, especially if you're planning on moving ETH1 to proof of stake within the year. I don't get this move. I don't understand it. That does tell me that it's probably going to be mineable longer than the year. I think uh, the, the, the statement that they're going to be going, you know, proof of stake on ETH1 sometime this year is a little further out you know i don't think they're going to reach that goal post so i wouldn't worry about it but you know just stay healthy stay strong and uh keep mining keep your keep your hash rates high and your watts low and i will see you next tuesday